The standard gear shifter has been replaced with this toggle switch here. So we pull down for drive and push up halfway for neutral and push up all the way for reverse and park. Uh, we just press that button there. If you want to switch from drive to sport, you just tap down on this again. You'll see sport indicated there and drive there on the left. Push for reverse, neutral, drive, sport, park. The second major upgrade in here for 2023, this curved screen. You can actually see this flows nicely across more than half of the dashboard. Slight curve to it here, as you can see. And that is a 12.3 inch digital driver instrument cluster display. Beside it over here, a nearly 15 inch touch activated central display. And it opens up the forward scenery a little bit. So you've got this excellent driving position, fantastic outward sight lines, and that beautiful head up display floating in front of you there is just the icing on the cake. Performance sedans have room for your kids and clients, but they're also fast and fun, which makes them awesome. With four doors, they're usually an easy sell to that apprehensive significant other, too. The 2023 BMW M340i is one such performance sedan, and the spiciest of the mainstream 3 Series dishes cooked up with a new this year recipe that sees it drizzled with onboard modernizations, topped with a more alert exterior design, and garnished tip and tail with exclusive classic BMW Motorsport badges, a nod to those first used on BMW's racing cars back in 1975. These special BMW badges are a 50-year anniversary present from the past. The 2023 BMW 3 Series starts at 52,570 Canadian in 330i xDrive configuration with a 255 horsepower turbo 4 and all-wheel drive as standard. There's a plug-in hybrid version from 54,990. And with straight six turbo hybrid power, my M340i tester opens the bidding at 66,000, before an extra 12,000 in add-ons makes it about 78,435 for the machine on your screen. Your taste may vary, but personally, I'd be skipping the $4,900 premium enhanced package and $2,000 driver assist package to put that nearly $7,000 in savings towards tires and brake pads and lapping day admission. I'd probably be choosing this new skyscraper gray paint, which makes the body lines pop to beautiful effect. How does the BMW M340i's fuel economy stack up? Very nicely, and not only do its 382 horsepower make it more powerful than competitors like the Lexus IS F Sport, Genesis G70, and Audi S4, it's also more fuel efficient than all of those. Combined economy lands at an NRCAN rated 9.2 liters per 100 kilometers of premium unleaded, with the Audi S4 making 33 less horsepower at 349, but using half a liter more fuel per 100 kilometers to do it. With 365 horsepower, the Genesis G70 makes 17 less ponies but uses more than two additional liters of gas to drive every 100 kilometers compared to the BMW. Its 11.5 liter per 100 kilometer rating means it is a thirsty one at the pumps. One day, electric motors may replace gasoline engines, but in the meantime, the way BMWs combine them under the hood of this car has some really thrilling results. The use of mild hybrid electrification here doesn't change the character of the engine as much as it just enhances it, and this power plant is probably the best thing about my tester. Six in a row makes it go, the 3 liter straight six is turbocharged and electrified by an integrated motor, connected to a 48 volt hybrid system that boosts the gas engine using electricity that's stored in its self-recharging battery. So if you can imagine Imagine an electric supercharger that makes its own electricity, you've got the gist of this mild hybrid system. At just 1100 RPM, the combustion power plant is still rolling out of bed and rubbing its eyes, but the electric motor is up and at them. At very low revs, it applies immediate torque to the driveline that shoved the car ahead until the turbo gets breathing a few revs later and picks things up from there. This engine has piles of throttle response where most engines have very little, and I have a sneaking suspicion that you'd like to hear what it sounds like. Though it is capable of some serious low rev pulling power, you're seeing this engine's best work when it's spinning fast. With a good launch, it leaps and then explodes off the line. Initial rollout is a solid punch, but the deepest shove into your seat begins about a third of the way into first gear, and stays on until you lift the accelerator. Those sound effects may have you wondering, is the BMW M340i twin turbo? 
No, but it is confusing. The M340i uses BMW's twin power turbo system, easily mistaken for twin turbo, which itself indicates that an engine has two turbochargers instead of one. But unlike twin turbo with two compressors, twin power turbo uses a single turbocharger whose performance and efficiency is optimized, in part by the use of two exhaust inlets, that's twin power, allowing the single turbocharger unit to extract more energy from the engine's hot exhaust gases as they exit the cylinders. So twin power turbo is a single turbo with two inlets and not twin turbo, which is two turbos. There is a twin turbo version of this engine in even higher performing BMW models, by the way. So we have a lot of different ways to control and customize how everything works in here. A lot of that requires using the central screen, uh, which means I'm going to bust out the Swiffer because as good as these look in these shots, you've really got to do some work uh, to keep the dust and smudges off. And so if you're kind of a neat freak like me, especially because I'm trying to, you know, use the good cameras and make sure that these shots look as good as possible, I keep one of these in the car. Uh, so that everything looks photo perfect. If you drive one of these, um, keeping a Swiffer in your glove box, probably a good idea if you're a bit of a neat freak like me. So a couple of ways uh, to do this, we're gonna start with uh, this button here on the steering wheel. We press that and up on the screen, we see two options appear down here, content or head up. So I'm gonna go to content, click this. And as we scroll up and down with this little wheel, just like that, we can switch between media, navigation, communication, safety features, maps and the like. So this gives us the ability to control what information is displayed to us or to keep that screen nice and simple if we like. There's even a G meter there. My personal favorite is this one, uh, the assisted view, and this is an infographic that positions your car virtually. Within its surroundings, you can see other traffic moving on here. You can see your lane markings. This gives you a sense of what those safety systems are up to in real time. We've also got this layout setting here, and you've got a couple of different display themes here uh, that you can choose from. So I tend to prefer this one here a little bit more condensed. We've got this one with a little bit uh, more space and this sort of clean and modern looking alternative as well. And so using just those two buttons on the steering wheel and a few millimeters of fingertip movement, we can control what information is displayed to us and what that information looks like. These are the drive modes. So Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro, we pick the one that we want here. Those are easily referenced up here on the screen. Uh, so there is Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro, each with its own sort of distinctive color and theme to it. Notice with the Sport button, we can actually click this multiple times and toggle because there is more than one Sport mode. You can see down on the bottom there, uh, we've got Sport, Sport Plus, which is even sportier, and Sport Individual. And so to control that Sport Individual program and set it up the way we like, uh, we're gonna go in here and click on Driving Settings, Drivetrain and Chassis, Sport Individual, and then we've got a few different options here we can choose from. Uh, so steering can be comfort or sport, drivetrain. This can be comfort, sport, or sport plus. And transmission, uh, we can choose comfort, sport, or sport plus as well. This button here just resets everything back to sport standard. And this is all part of how the BMW M340i allows you to fully customize the driving experience to your specific tastes at any given time. <laughs> The 8-speed automatic is a gem. Upshifts are incredibly clean and quick, there's no interruption in power flow, no lash through the axles. The engine and gearbox work beautifully together, even more so when pushed hard. Downshifts are instant and the torque is right there behind them. While deployable in various stages through the selected drive mode, the M340i's athletic side often remains part of the driving experience. Engaging, encouraging, smooth and eager. By the way, the hybrid's ability to add electric torque to the engine can also help save fuel without sacrificing throttle response, and it makes the idle stop system much smoother, faster, and less noticeable too. So the point is, electric motors can help gas engines do some pretty cool stuff. With 382 horsepower and 369 pounds of torque, the M340i can rapidly chug back great lengths of tarmac while squashing your eyeballs into your skull. But one of the best things about it is that you absolutely don't need a lead foot to enjoy this battery-boosted Turbo 6. That's because of how the athletic nature of this machine shines through the driving experience. Even in Eco Pro mode with a light foot while cruising the highway at 105 and relaxing to some podcasts, there are still plenty of sporty signals making their way to the driver. There's little need to do more than about 2,000 revs, and while virtually inaudible at those speeds, the engine's electric-assisted throttle response always feels urgent and encouraging. Just squeeze your big toe down a little to get the speedometer into a steady climb, no noise, no downshift. With throttle response where you're not expecting it, 
even leisurely drives are more engaging. And even without sport mode to sharpen the scalpel, the M340i's variable sport steering has just a hair of on-center slack to keep things from feeling too twitchy or nervous. An inch on either side beyond this and the weight of the steering is ramped up. At the tips of your fingers, it's an easy car to keep firmly placed in the center of its lane on the highway, while still responsive enough to change lanes with your wrists and not your forearms. With sport mode activated, the steering feels thicker, heavier, and more clamped down. While commuting, drivers can handle highway lane changes with their fingertips. With bigger steering inputs requiring more muscle in the forearms and biceps to help draw enthusiasts into the experience. Whether at a lapping day or repeatedly perusing your favorite Northern Ontario highway on-ramp at a brisk pace, the direct relationship between the position of your wrists on the steering wheel and the car's position on the road, combined with the howling explosion of electrified thrust from under the hood, are a constant source of smiles. If gas engines become obsolete one day, this is one of the ones I'll miss the most. During 1,500 kilometers of highway cruising, I noted excellent performance from the assisted driving mode, which can autonomously change lanes and keep your car properly distanced between lane markings and other motorists. It feels subtle and trustworthy in action, demonstrating excellent pre-calculation of maneuvers to be smooth and minimal. Unlike past test drives of comparable Volvo and Mercedes models, I found the BMW's assist systems are highly effective while all but working invisibly in the background. On smooth pavement, expect quiet cruising as speeds enter triple-digit territory. Using sport mode lets a little of the engines hum into the cabin. The suspension gives drivers a high-resolution feel of what's going on between the car and the surface of the road while managing to filter out and stabilize the car during bigger disturbances. So it's a smooth and relaxing drive that's also highly communicative, adding up for an experience that'll likely tempt you into multiple laps of your favorite winding back roads. Brakes largely back the urgent reflexes you'll find from the M340i's handling and steering. There's a sliver of numb space at the top of the pedal's travel to make it easy to work the brakes smoothly in traffic. But dig in more than a little bit, and the stopping power grows rapidly and builds progressively. Still, these racy brakes are a little squeaky at times and seem to be more precise the harder you work them and the hotter they get. Though responsive in day-to-day -day driving, you are seeing their very best work and experiencing maximum precision under more severe use. That's par for the course where high-performance braking is concerned. In all, and especially in sport mode, the M340i responds in a way that encourages drivers to use the sort of small, precise inputs required for smooth and spirited driving. In a sense, the car's reflexes seem honed to teach the driver how to best operate their machine for the biggest grins, and there are plenty of them. All right, so you may not have seen inside of one of these before. Here's a demonstration for you. So I'm in my comfortable seated driving position as a uh, five foot 10, 200 pound guy. Here's a sense of the space around me here. Got plenty of knee room here if I wanna sit with my legs a little wider apart. Uh, common controls all falling fairly easily to within reach. We do have to use the central screen here to access climate controls now, uh, but the reach is well within limits here. Back up over top of my head, even with a ball cap at five foot 10, I've still got just about the width of my hand up above me. Now let's see how someone of my size would fit in the back seat directly behind themselves. A little bit of a duck required right there. So at my height, you're gonna just wanna watch your head a little bit coming in over the top. And once we're in and seated, actually a softer rear seat bench than I was thinking. I've still got more than the width of my hand in front of me here in terms of knee room. Also got two USB-C ports down here, our own automatic climate control system. So your kids, your clients, your friends sitting back here, as long as they're not much taller than me at about five foot 10, uh, I think they'll find plenty of space, no problem at all for a four person road trip here uh, in some comfort for you. There are a few complaints too. The new instrument cluster screen left me longing for a more conventional looking set of round gauges, and the digital tachometer visibly exaggerates the speed at which some of your gear shifts take place. Your eyes will see an instant change in RPM on the screen, but your ears hear a slightly slower one. It's a little disconnected at times. Further, my tester's 19-inch Pilot Sport rubber is capable of a smooth and quiet ride provided you're on smoothly textured pavement. More coarsely textured surfaces can rapidly spike cabin noise levels, meaning cabin quietness is largely at the mercy of the surface you're driving over. In addition to the sometimes squeaky brakes and a sometimes noisy ride, you may also notice some subtle scrubbing and binding and grabbing from the tires and suspension during tight low-speed corners like while well parking. These disturbances are well within limits for a car with high-performance parts like this one, but they do pull slightly from refinement during everyday driving. Well, thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.
shift into reverse with the electronic shifter there. Get you right up close in there for a better look at these graphics. We've got the handy bird's eye monitor here that allows us to see the entire surroundings of the vehicle on a single screen and a more conventional backup camera view here. This is effective, it works well. Uh, the thing to me is just I wish the graphics were a little bit cleaner and sharper. You can see there's a little bit of fuzz around a lot of the pixels here and you can expect that image quality to take an even further hit if you're backing up in the dark. Thank you.